Dad Pod. Dad Just a video from the well. Have a name. Podcast. Oh, midlife crisis. Howdy, daddy. Mm. Midlife crisis. <laughs> <laughs> Dadcast. That's not bad, actually. Yeah. We've got some news. Dave, how are you? I'm very well. Adrian, how are you? Good. Nathan's not here. He's uh, he's camping miserably somewhere in the west. He's mad into the camping, isn't he? In the rain. He's mad into camping in the rain. Uh, we're going to the actual picnic. Yeah. For a live recording of Dadcast. Yeah. In are we the, actually recording it? In the yeah, we are. In the yeah. Who Let the Dads Out section. It's Does, the first year that section has it is, been yeah. introduced. Yeah. So. What time are we on? First and. Uh, Sometime early afternoon on Saturday. Yeah. One Main stage, 10.30 p.m. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's us and, uh, and Kevin Kilbane. <laughs> Kev's got what sort of desperate measures? Long. What desperate measures could we like promise to people to actually come? Because I'd be fairly concerned that there'll be about four people, I mean, including us. I'd take four right now end. if you offered it. <laughs> including us. Um, it's the electric picnic, I don't know, free, something or other, difficult to get. Because I've, I've been to, like, uh, Bob, I went to see Bob Geldof and Dave McWilliams um, talk to each other in a tent there before, and like, there was a good few people in there. Um, it'd be embarrassing if there was fewer It'd be that. really embarrassing if there was... The same amount of people who are here right now. Yeah. I don't expect anybody to show up. Can, we, not people? Crack? Can we tell them there's like free wine or something? Yeah, we'll bring, we'll bring a bottle of Buckfast each. <laughs> and we'll, we'll smuggle it out. We'll smuggle it in <laughs> and we'll give you a shot of Buckfast to get your day going. Yeah. Let's go there so, expecting the worst. The other question is, like, how many parents actually go to an extra picnic? Like, how many dads be down there? I, I mean, loads or, like... I think... I don't know... I, the age profile has definitely changed. It's more of a mature crowd than the other festivals mm. there have been in this country over the years. I think you'll find a lot of the people who are Electric Picnic would have been with us in a Witness and Oxygen back mm. in the day. And a lot of them have kids. We'll see. We'll see. I'm interested to see because I, I heard that um, it had definitely skewed younger in, in recent years. So. Right. I was, uh, we, we, we took the, all the family and the kids and cousins and everyone down to Tato Park on Monday. Yeah. <clears throat> Great day, apart from the fact that it sun shone for 15 minutes, pissed rain for 20, sun for 15, rain for 20. Yeah. And um, so, and so, so a lot of queues, but like there's so much there for people. It, it is great fun. But as we're going through the kiosk and paying, there's this guy, and he can't be more than 20. He's probably listening now, maybe mid 20s, I'd say. He looked he was pretty young, like he was the age I wish I was now. <laughs> Days from <laughs> you're my 40th. That just from my 40th birthday. Lovely, lovely fella. And as I'm paying, he says, uh, I love listening to the dad cast. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and I said, What What age are you? You couldn't possibly be a father. Said, no, no, we just, I just think it's good fun. So the number of non dads who listen. I think what surprised us. Well, I hope that guy is also at Electric Picnic and uh, happy to come up and tell us stories. Remember I was saying I had the same thing at Starbucks over Christmas. It's almost the exact same scenario. It's, I, I was like, fair play to you. That's a young great. man listening to prepare his way. Here, did you hear what he just dropped into the conversation there? Like, My oh, it, was bad, like, it was like Jim Gavin mentioned Jim McConnell. <laughs> if you like blink and you miss it. Days uh, away. Well, it is. Well, everyone's birthday is days away. No, my, I mean, okay, right. <laughs> like, a number of days versus... When's your birthday, McIntyre? Next month. No, not next month. The early days of the following month. October. All right. So miles away. You're 40th. Yeah. yeah. You it won't be much. You're not the sort of fella to get... We won't be doing much to market. You're not the sort of fella to get have, like, an existential crisis no. about life. I have that every day, you? anyway. Every morning. For some reason, my Alexa screen, the one beside my bed delivers start climate change headlines pretty much on demand. I wake up, open my eyes, I look to check the time, and there it is. The Amazon rainforest is burning, the lungs of the earth <laughs> dying. This is uh, an excellent uh, insight for us into our general interactions with you and why you're you such a cranky <laughs> bastard. You've got a posh Alexa beside your bed. Yeah, I think I need to... Can I, I'm sure I can... I uh, bet you can. Turn it off. Not turn Un it off. Unplug it. No, I don't. No, Alexa's listening that. to you in the bedroom. You see, when you're in there talking about I'll climate change. Report. <laughs> <laughs> when, he, when he's in the bedroom going, oh, that's too hot. <laughs> Alexa's like, oh, climate change. <laughs> Hit him up with some climate change. <laughs> when have you ever said that's too hot in I the bedroom? I mean, I'm just trying. Sex. <laughs> like <a> very, <laughs> what? What? Saucy is what I meant. <laughs> that, that hot. That's the only lines he utters. <laughs> only lines he utters during sex are, what do you mean? It already is in. Hey. 
Jesus Christ. I'd suddenly try to again. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I maybe need to, I don't know, recalibrate it so that I actually deliver sports stories or yes. sports headlines or yes. something a little more um, uplifting first thing in the morning. But anyway, yeah, I'm nearly 40. This guy was a, a kid, but he listened. I don't the know if it's of the conversation. anything to do with being a dad, but I don't bother listening to anything really current affairs and news anymore. You give it up. I just, it's an endless cycle of... Misery. Misery. I was at home the other week and my mother started saying, oh, did you hear that, um, about that girl down in Longford? I actually, to be fair, I don't really know what she was talking about and I uh, haven't since chosen to figure it out, but I was like, listen, Matt, um, I don't want to know about it. Like... And I, to be fair, I actually had to... My wife said to me afterwards, I was listening to that conversation and you sounded like 20-year-old Adrian. As in, I was like, oh, like you met the kids out of... Um, Kevin, the uh, teenager. They won, yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> my, exactly. You don't want to hear the news. In my head, that was not what happened at all. So it was good to get that <clears throat> instant feedback. But, um, yeah, I just stopped. I, like, I can't be dealing with it. Like, it's just there is an endless cycle of... Like, it's not like... Um, do you watch King of Queens? No. King of Queens, you won't get the reference right, but anyway, the main character... Keep going he, though, Adrian, no one's with you. Well, be You've lost the room, keep going. <laughs> I have to explain it to you now. So the main character, Kevin James, right, he goes home to his parents' house, he's like an adult who lives with his wife somewhere else, goes back to his parents' house, goes in the door, his dog, so he's like a 35-year-old man, his dog comes running out to meet him, and he's like, oh, Spot, it's so great to see you. So he's like talking to the wife about the dog, and he's like, oh, this is the Spot's been in the family for like... 30 years, he's like, such an amazing dog. <laughs> the wife is like, it's a different spot. <laughs> what? 30 years? Causes the parents aside, he's like, Spot hasn't been in the family for 30 years, that's fucking ridiculous. And the family's like, oh yeah, I know, every seven years we have to get a new dog. The guy, the guy is such an idiot that we have to, uh, <laughs> we keep telling him it's still Spot. So, um, I'm not quite that levels of, like, blotting things out, but at the same time, I just don't find any, I just don't see the purpose in, like, there's just a constant cycle of death and misery. Yeah, um, a little bit of tuning out from the news. Here comes the counter-argument. A little bit of tuning out from the news is how Brexit happens, is how fascism takes over, do you know what I mean? Like no, the world I don't agree. The world to its impending doom of yeah. burning hellfire and... Yeah, come on, you got you to... Like, like no, food, you're not, you can't be seriously riot. telling me like that, how, listening how, to the news of some, like awful happening to a child no, that, or to whatever. That's like, a little bit different. And that's what specifically... I'm not talking <clears throat> about, like, I will... You I said will you're not any more current affairs. Generally, try to steer clear of most of it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And what, I mean, is it, what it has changed since you became a dad? Um, I don't know if it's directly related to being a dad, but definitely it is only in the last couple of years. Yeah. It probably is related to being a dad. Like, I just can't be listening to... Like, something miserable is happening to children and adults all over the world now, right? And that will have been the case since young Adam was... Uh, I think it's got worse. Boy. But uh, it may or may not have, but like we're certainly hearing more about it. And I'm just choosing to not hear about it anymore. I mean, I don't, I don't, I, look, we're getting very deep into it now. I, w I don't think you can say it, it's worse. Can you imagine what life was like for children like a couple of hundred years I ago? Imagine if like Sky News, in our, in they were living lifetime. on the poverty line. In our lifetime. In our lifetime, we just know about it. We hear about it it's now. Every time, the information every time a child... You know, I was involved in an accident on a, on, a, on a holiday resort in Spain or Portugal or somewhere. We hear about it. Yeah, they all would have been front page news. And, like, the only news source would have been 9 o'clock news on the telly. Why do they watch. report... For, for, here's a question. Why do they report road deaths? Why do they say a man in his 30s has been killed on a motorbike, a motorbike accident in Limerick this afternoon? Why does, it, why does that happen? Because it's news. You're listening to the news. But, like, why, what's news about that? Why do I need to know that? Well, for a start, if you never heard of any road deaths, you might get to the 31st of December and start thinking, <laughs> yeah. oh, Irish roads are so much safer than they were last year. I wouldn't. Because I haven't was, heard one story of a road casualty. If I was that casualty. interested, I would go and look up the figures. So I wouldn't. No, but, but you wouldn't be interested enough to go look up the figures. That's why the news needs to tell you that. It's a public information campaign to prevent people from driving too fast. So and I the get only that way part, that you get reminded about this is if it's actually drilled into you again and again and again. But and I don't think that's why newsreaders read, read the news out. I think it's just something that's always happened and people go, oh, this is a road death. We should put that in the news button. That's because um, people dying in tragic circumstances affects a community in a way that a person dying of normal causes doesn't. And so they don't report Joe Bloggs. Yeah. And an 84-year-old man died of a heart attack. You get nothing else into the work. news. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, although, that. although they do do that on the death notices. They do, that's why they exist. But the point about the... and I, I, I have lots of friends who actually make the same point as you, and it's not... I don't feel very strongly about it, but at the same time, if we're not aware of the fact that 
every day a million journeys happen and one of them ends in death, then, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just a little reminder to go, go easy, lads. I've heard it now after my 40-odd years on Earth. I've heard that story, and it's absolutely tragic, but I've heard that story, I would say, thousands of times. I understand implicitly, and I would think the average Joe understands implicitly, that that's just something that happens. It's horrific, and it's tragic, and it's devastating for the families involved. But you assume that it's something that happened. That happens. I don't need to know about it. Does it, it appears that there's lots of things you don't need to know about. And you're, you're, you're turning. You're turning the dial, except the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I wonder is it to do with the whole bottle issue and like uh, losing your bottle as you become a parent, not taking risks anymore, um, not wanting that creeping sense of outside somehow poisoning the well of the inside and the peace that you've created in the little nest. I, d- I, c- I, could, I could see there's an element of that, yeah. Yeah, the frequency with which I find myself outside of my comfort zone has definitely reduced in the five years since I became a dad. Now, I don't know if that's because, <clears throat> you know, maybe work becomes a bit more settled and you're not maybe taking that many risks in your professional life. You're a bit older, so you're not... Well, you're definitely going to be more risk-aware as you get older experience tells you. And There's a reason why when we're, when we're yeah, in thought. mid-commentary we talk about the fearlessness of youth and how the, the older guy trying to get over that finishing line for the first time the fear of not getting over it is so much greater than it is for the 21 year old who's like just came out of minor. I think Roger Federer choked at Wimbledon this year. I think it had all the hallmarks of a nailed on choke and I saw nobody talking about it and I was like he's just choked. That's, that's a bang to rights He's two points up, he's serving, he's got two serves, just needs one of them to go in, and he shot the bed. He and what, what are you saying, that he, that it's... That it's completely, it's an age thing. But it's then, like but 21 then, year old Federer, 23 year old Federer, when he started to win, wouldn't have choked. But then you hear loads of people talk about the exact opposite. Like that, you know, the more experienced jar of won a bunch of titles, like I know what to do to win. Yeah, the, but there, I mean, are I mean, two, in that there are two sides to the I argument. Think, yeah. I think that... Um, maybe at his peak, that's where he was, and he was just a machine. Mm. But this is the end of it. This is like playing out the string. And you know, there might be this might be the last. Absolutely, it becomes far. You could see him think. You could actually see him think. There was a pause, which is out of character for the normal routine. It's like, uh oh, the dawning realization of what's going on here. And I think it's the same with like the dawning realization of like, uh, uh, if I drive too fast <laughs> here, I've got the kids in the back of the car. Like, I think a lot... So I'd, I'd stopped cycling uh, around town and had tried it once recently and had been like, can't do this, it's too dangerous. And then got a new bike, I was like, oh, I'm going to do it. And I got it back, it's fine. I'm yeah, terrified. I'm back. But it's, it's... And it's actually good for you. It's great for you. If you don't get knocked off your bike. How did you get back up when you did? Um, did you break both your arms in one go? Fractured, yeah. Um... um I got back up as soon as I was able to get back up and just got out of it. have kids at that stage? Oof, that is a good question. I think we had a... I don't think you did. You didn't do it here, did you? Here? Yeah. yeah. Did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I did it, and I, <laughs> I got car doored, is what happened, at the bottom of Leeson Street. You went over the top? Yeah. Um, sprawled across the road. Uh, your man, the idiot who opened the door, comes up and is like... I was like, I'd been winded because I'd gone over the door of the car and was at on my back or whatever it was and was winded. And he was like trying to lift me up and I was like, get off me, you fucking idiot. And uh, the thing that made, it, made everything much worse was, I didn't realise at this point because it was adrenaline pumping and all that that I'd done any damage until I came into the office and sat down to try and type at the keyboard. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is, this is getting weird. Um, but what made everything worse was that after a few minutes the guy goes, oh, jeez, I wouldn't mind, but the exact same thing happened to me a couple of months ago. I'm like, all right. It wouldn't make you fucking think about looking at the Iron Murray there. He's <laughs> getting out of the door with it. Jesus Christ. But uh, no, I just got back up on it after a while. And, like soon. Because you, you just, like there are periods where, there are periods where, like every day you cycle to work, there is something happens at some point or another that if you're not, not only cycling your own bike, but aware of that pedestrian and that car and that truck, essentially doing all of that stuff yeah. at the one time, you will have some sort of a dice with death with, without any doubt but, if you um, leave you your do, ha, do, front door every morning and you say to yourself that every single person I encounter on the road this morning is stupid mm. it'll lead you to see an awful lot of things before they happen that's, and that's the way to do it take it for granted that everyone around you is an idiot mm. yeah sometimes I'm that stupid person in the way <laughs> 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 
<laughs> but I, I, it's the amount of times I say to myself two seconds before something happens, I bet you this gobbler right. right now is going to pull out of this space. Well, even and with then the I slow thing. down, but I don't slow down so much that like I'm not on top of him when it happens because I want him to see that I'm on top of him when it happens. But if you just keep telling yourself that, you'll you'll find yourself in fewer scrapes than than if you just kind of go around. Don't take the same attitude to your cycling as you do to what news you tune into. <laughs> <laughs> um, like we could be a mature society and actually build proper infrastructure for I cyclists don't worry to about that. have to There's avoid no fear of that. being dead. It's like, you know, the latest politician comes out and says, oh, I've, I've, we've just created 25 kilometres of cycling track in the middle of Dublin City. Like you've taken your fucking paintbrush out and you've painted a line in the middle of an already existing <coughs> car lane and eaten up half of that car lane to the point where they don't they can't even drive in it without it's like, uh, driving in on top of you. It's not you haven't really created a cycle lane. He's no, literally just firing in the f bombs this morning, Jerry. Isn't they, 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 that's one a, topic particularly that really. Well, we, we should do stuff about it because we, we if only we had access to the national airways to um, try and put people hold people to account, Adrian. Um, the other point I was going to make there was just on the... What are you going to do? Just you're like, don't, you don't care about current affairs, but here you are. Give no, on that one, I mean, because it <coughs> directly <coughs> impacts on whether I'm yeah. there or not. That's this is exactly how but that's Brexit okay. happens. This but is exactly... People tune out, they get bored, somebody comes along and talks about one specific issue that's going to nibble away, and you're like, oh, that guy's great, he's got my back, vote, 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 and it's like, oh, shit, I, I voted for Trump. I'm for, uh, for Brexit or Trump. But um, the other point I was going to make on the um, sort of, like, maturity and the risk of thing, I did the rubber ring for the first time. Uh, when it was in Hollywood. <laughs> 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 I did the rubber ring. I did um, what the rubbery. I was in I was in Fran in France and I googled the French for rubber ring, trying to understand exactly what this sport was going to be. What is and a rubber it did ring? throw up some interesting uh, you water? results. It's you know the thing where you yeah, you it's the it's a rubber ring. A ring by, made from pulled, rubber. Pulled by a speedboat. Right. Okay, and right. you're clenching on for like Oh yeah, <laughs> trying to avoid grim death. You could be describing it. So like, uh, <laughs> I know. like water skiing. Only you're sat in a little. Not sat in anything. Donut. You're you're lying with sort of uh, face down, with your hands holding onto a couple of straps, and uh, the speedboat takes off at some sort of a small, low speed, and then eventually picks up speed, starts to go from left to right. The ring is like crashing up on the backsplash from the boat. Right. Um, Sounds death to fun. No, it wasn't. It wasn't any fun. I had to do it because my two nephews were doing it, and I was like... But what, what, are, what are the risk of injury? You can't um, hit anything solid. Whiplash, uh, tooth loss, concussion. What would you mean? Well, the solid thing off? is the, uh, the rubber ring. It's not like a little fun car tyre. It's like a pretty solid structure. So you wouldn't do it again? I, I, it happened so, that, so every time somebody falls off, they stop the speedboat to pick them up again. So the first two times, I was the one who fell off. And then I was like, I don't care what happens with this next one, but I ain't. It, they're going to be like cutting me off this ring. I'm not. I'm not getting off. So the other two lads went off the next two times, and then there was a fifth go, and I was like, lads, just hold off there. I'm getting into the boat. There was no chance I was doing the last one, and I was very happy about it in the end because it was the uh, maddest one. But yeah, I don't know. My point was that. I don't know how risk averse I actually. Maybe I should be more. You know, like even more risk. Well, well, right. well, that's the uh, you're a father now and you've got dependence, and you should have a bit more maturity about life than doing the other rubber ring. That's yes. my that's if, if you don't think anything else from the podcast today, do, do the rubber ring, advice. he says, or not. Don't I do would it. steer clear <coughs> of the rubber ring at all costs and, and all ancillary activities. <laughs> uh, Tommy Hayes has been in touch on Twitter at Dadcast Pod to say, in the midst of potty training at the minute, Dave. I think she may have rationed her toilet breaks to extract extra treats. <laughs> Very crafty. I mean, it was it was obvious. It's like the uh, Velociraptors opening the door in Jurassic Park. You know, so, uh, balls. The children will withhold their pee to get the jellies. I mean, it was it was clearly going to happen. Well, they will. Well, they won't withhold it. They will withhold some of it. They will go to the toilet. But they'll only let maybe a third of what is actually there out. Yes. So they know they have to go back 10 minutes later once jellies have been consumed and um, <coughs> seek another couple of jellies. We but it'll only that. go so far. It'll only last so long. Eventually, he or she will be trained and they won't be able to play that card anymore. We were doing a one jelly for pee, three jellies for poo scenario. <laughs> and um, 
You're holding your shit in for an hour to get well, the, we three more was, jellies we, there. I, I was thinking about up- a double size one, six jellies. Yeah, I was thinking about upping the the poo ration. To be honest with you, because did, did, did he get hard, four jellies if he did both at the no, same time? No, no, no. That would just be a strict three jelly rule right there, Dave. But um, so but he, he's done Camped loads of three per visit. He does loads of uh, like he'll go in and uh, sit on. The, we got him a seat for the toilet now, so he's off the potty, and he seems to rather that. But um, he would do loads of going in and just uh, potty, that up, potty. Run in, sitting there. Put him up. Like, have you anything to do? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nothing. And then he'd jump off and he'd go, "Poo poo, dada, three jellies." <laughs> <laughs> Is he Looking done? In. How far down the road are you? Um, he's not fully done. We're probably three weeks into it now, and he's certainly not fully done. Um, Making progress. Nearly there. All all peas, pretty much, and. He's so close sometimes with the Monday morning, I think it was, he was like, Polly Dada! And you have to, obviously, because you can't be sure if it's a poo, you want to be getting him in there pretty sharpish. Um, got him in, and he just literally, if he'd held it for another second and a half, I was literally just uh, pulling down his big boy pants, and the poo started to emerge. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, and he was, and he not, he's not normally like this, but he was distraught about it, like... I don't know why, because like we would never, we don't. Get, obviously, you're not giving out to him, or you're not, you're not like, oh, you're like, oh, that was a close, that was close, and we nearly got there, and he's well in the house time. Well, big, the timing issues last for another couple of years. Do they? Pro- okay. You know, often they could last after seven enough. or eight. Like they enough. don't give themselves any leeway. Right. <coughs> <coughs> All the they think guard. if it takes me three <laughs> seconds to get from whatever I'm playing with to a position where I'm on the toilet with my bags down, I will take. All three of those seconds. <laughs> right, okay, okay. There's no, there's well, that's no reassuring. Pre- <laughs> I mean, no come on. Planning. You say seven or eight years, I mean, 30, 35, 36 <laughs> yeah, years yeah, yeah, before yeah. you actually, like... Yeah, that might be more to do with the feed of pints and the curry you yeah. had the previous night. At that point, your dad isn't bringing you in and pulling your gags down. <laughs> I mean, maybe he is, but... <laughs> that's, that is reassuring, I have to say. It's good to hear that. No, boys are lazy, and, like, they are... Um, engrossed in a task mm. it's very difficult to pull them away from it mm. and they won't leave it until the last possible yeah. juncture we've been doing uh, stickers and jellies but we're pretty much through it now he will occasionally go oh poop it out a sticker and then be kind of looking over to where the jellies are and occasionally you have to you have to indulge him ah uh, yeah but he, he's there's an open bag of jellies in the house I tend to eat most of them. <laughs> <laughs> there's never been an open bag of jellies in the house I mean I don't know what you're talking about they don't exist in, in real life um you wanted some uh, going to school. Yeah. You're, you're, um, are you prepared? So this is your first child going to big school? Yeah, and that child turned five yesterday. It's all getting very... Time is passing by in the blink of an eye. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, Monday week, day one. My dad came over yesterday to... He can't believe he's the grandfather of a five-year-old either, but um, he came over to give the wee man a present and... Um, he brought with him, I can't remember what paper he got it from, but there was an article in one of the papers over the last couple of days and it was like, how to be teacher's pet. I, s- I haven't read it. I forgot, to, I forgot to read it on the way in this morning because I wanted to be prepared for this podcast. But um, There's a first for everything, go on. Yes. It, um, within that article, apparently, are a number of tips to make you and your wife or your partner the pet of the teacher, of your child. That doesn't sound like one in school. That doesn't sound like a good idea. No. I mean, who, like, uh, what? Well, what what should I have in mind getting towards Monday week? You Apart from making so you're sure not trying, that he's happy out and that's all that matters. And like, who cares? The the teachers that we've had have all been class. So there's been no kind of currying favour or no need to curry favour or try and separate your child from everybody else that's in there. I mean, that's weird. That's a weird competitive bizarre. No? Do, do, should a parent worry about w- at what stage <clears throat> their boy or girl is at going into school in terms of wh- what they can read and what they can write and what no. they can spell and what letters they can draw and no. what numbers they can draw? None of that like matters. They go through everything, don't they? None of that matters. From scratch. But absolutely, yeah. So, so um, they, this is the number one, this is the letter A from the very beginning. So I, I, I remember the reading homework. you got to spend as long as it takes to do the homework. They'll tell you... I don't know. Does we do should, homework in junior infants? We could do a whole... I presume there is, yeah. I think, what? I'm sure there is, yeah. Jesus Christ, at that age. I'd say, yeah, I'm absolutely... That, we, I never had homework when I was in junior infants. Are you sure? Absolutely sure. I do you 100% remember that yeah. accurately? I never recall bringing anything home with me. Granted, I was like five years old, but... Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it, maybe it was just... Um, so Jesus, weird. I couldn't swear on that. Then it's second I, I, uh, okay, well then, I don't know. But I just remember that... Um, 
like the reading at home took a while. It took a while to kind of to land, and now there's a, a full Harry Potter read in one day, and it's like none of it matters. How quickly they get stuff has no impact on their ability to deeply understand it for the rest of their lives. <coughs> so you just have to be patient and right. just like They'll pick it up at their own pace. Yeah. Right. And has he been like um, doing Montessori or other? Last couple of years, yeah, but they and he he's loved it and they've been brilliant. Um, but in terms of reading and writing, he can write, he can draw all his numbers. But in terms of letters and everything, you know, he'd be starting from absolutely starting from scratch. That's fine. So the, the whole point of not being in school is not being in school. They yeah, teach all that yeah. stuff. The Danes are the the Scandinavians. One of the Swedes um, don't go into school until they're seven. <laughs> one one of the Swedes. One of the Scandinavians. The Danes <laughs> are the Swedes. Right? Are one of the Jesus Scandinavians. Right. They don't, there's no school. There's no organised school until seven, and at that point, you're not supposed to be able to read. You're not supposed to be able to. So you're, you've had free play. They wouldn't be tipping yeah. away at home, would they? The Swedes. And I don't. I don't. <laughs> are, they, are one of the one of the Swedes? <laughs> <Turn up. laughs> um, I don't think so. I think that's the whole point. It's right. like I'm sure there is like organised. Childcare, where it's um, heavily theorised behind why we're doing this. Yeah, um, you need you need all in though on that, don't you? Like you can't have uh, <laughs> listen, We'll do that, <laughs> and everyone else can go to school at five. And like, uh, and did you notice within weeks of <clears throat> your kids starting school that suddenly their interests changed dramatically? Like I've heard of kids say, for example, they've getting into drugs before, and stuff. <laughs> not quite. Before they started. Junior infants, like they wouldn't have really had any interest in football or uh, sticker albums or watching a hurling match or whatever it might be. And oh, then you have to spend a, two or three weeks in school and suddenly, oh, yeah, no, I have to go here and I have to do that. And well, I need a new hurley and I want to do this. Um, a bit. That, that doesn't have to be sport, uh, whatever the interest might have been, because they're suddenly thrown into a group and a lot of people in that group might have older brothers and sisters. Yeah, so definitely, there's definitely other influences uh, suddenly in your life that weren't there before, but it's mostly all right. It's mostly grad, I think. I mean, it's just, are you prepared? Are you doing the drop-off on the first day? Are you doing the pick-up? I think Nicky's taking the day off work, so... Right. It's, see, it's a double historical day because the younger guy's starting Montessori. Free gas. At the exact same time. Yeah. So um, we have everybody going to school in Montessori this year for the first time. One starting Montessori, one starting school, and then one going into second class. It'd be like a peace in the valley. <laughs> Big day <laughs> for two hours. <laughs> yeah. Big day. Big day. We've uh, Montessori first day Montessori Monday. Is it Monday? Monday week. Monday, Monday week. week Monday yeah. week. Monday week. Yeah. So I'll be in late. <laughs> or not at all. <laughs> I don't know. Was even that for me? <coughs> Um, time? From whether you or your daughter, I, I don't think I think they're very excited about going to school. I think there's definitely um, there's definitely bad sleep the first couple of weeks of like a this is new. There's, right. there's a little bit of anxiety. Uh, from but you? It, it, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have constant low level anxiety anyway. So that's, how can this I tell new. the difference? <laughs> um, but when you were at home, say on that first day, are you? constantly finding your thoughts drawn to her in school and oh, I wonder what she's doing now and I wonder if she's happy and is she in the corner on her own and but like that is that is now your life yeah because mm. that's every day right what the, what the difference between the first day and the it's like oh they make friends and they get on well and but like Jesus it seems like it's um it's anybody watching Euphoria Jesus oh. Christ <laughs> It's on, uh, it's on Sky. You should uh, check out the first episode at least. If no, we haven't made it any further than that. Well, what is it? Like it's um, 17, 16, 16, 14, 15, 16, 17 year olds uh, and the life that they lead. Right. The lads are sharing around the porn that they've made of the girls in the class. The, the girls are in Sorry, rehab. Is this for, like a documentary okay. or is it I mean, no, it's not, it's not a documentary. Okay, it's, um, but it's based on... I presume real it's stories. It's written on real yeah. stories. Yeah, but to be fair, I mean, I don't know anything about it. I've literally never heard it until just now. But to be fair, like, they've obviously chosen their subjects well. They're not, because they came to my school at 15, 14, 15, 16. <laughs> They'd be like, right, there's no real documentary too much in this, vis a vis the porn and all that. Um, so I presume they've just so chosen their subjects to be like what I'm. What I'm trying well, to say is forty years ago, Adrian. I know, but what I'm saying is, I mean, <laughs> things have changed. Is the point that they're making? What I'm saying is that, like, they might. They, it, I, I presume they're not typical of teenagers of 
of think, typical teenagers. I think the point you're trying to make is that the fear is that is. Well, that's the fear, typical. but sure, that's what Euphoria wants you to believe, Dave. That's the, this is the whole current news, current affairs cycle. That's, yeah, what, but that's what they want you like, to believe. It might not hear, actually be true. You hear these sort of stories every day of. Well, you should, what, what I say to, to you, Dave, is too early to start stop listening to those stories. Surely. I have more story. immediate worries. Uh, yeah, I, I, try, <clears throat> I, I, I try not to find but what myself... If, what if it's now that you're making those bad decisions that are influencing your children to become these people later on in life? <clears throat> what if these are, the, these are the formative years that you, you've already fucked up and you can't get them back? They will be influenced by their surroundings. Yeah. Friends, school... Peers. Yeah. And the rock-hard discipline. <laughs> and the, the black bags. <laughs> the black bags and toys. <laughs> yeah. The, um, the other and it happens around birthdays and Christmas that I look at and I just think what are we doing to this world it's like just a sheer amount of plastic mm. and you know they, he got presents all plastic which he loves and he hasn't stopped playing with them and they're great little figurines and everything but five years time where will all that be all that plastic be is it going to be in the bottom of a landfill yeah I think never we rotting we have like, a series of other podcasts in us don't we like today is the evidence of anything We've got a series of other podcasts we could do. But we have a playroom full of toys now mm. that it's uh, now it's kind of like when you go into your wardrobe every six months and you say, well, I'm going to be disciplined here <coughs> and ruthless. And everything that I have not worn in the last six months gets put into a bag and Drops delivered to the charity, to charity shop. Yeah. I do that once every three years, not every six months, but go on. Right. So we are fast running out of room in the playroom. Yeah. Just I just know. Lift it all up and go. <laughs> go where though? Charity shop. Toys. Yeah. I didn't. I, loads. Of, loads. Sorry. Loads. Of, loads. Of charity shops don't take them. Loads of charity shops do. So these are toys without <coughs> packaging and. Are they in good condition? <clears throat> yeah. Grand. So, so anything that's broken or there's also no fit for purpose wouldn't be d offered up. But uh, it's funny actually. Now that you mentioned it, the school across the road from us used to have a pre-Christmas fair where you would be able to offload a lot of that stuff and then people would buy it for next to nothing. But then last year there was like, no toys, thanks very much, because uh, people didn't want them, didn't take them, and they ended up with them. And then I presume at that point, it's like, dump. Yeah. So. Because I know there's 40% of the stuff, like all the large Lego that <coughs> we would have got for the older guy when he was younger, but the two-year-old thinks, now that I'm way too big for this, I yeah, can't yeah, be yeah. playing with this kind of stuff. Like, what <coughs> happens to all these plastic blocks? And what happens to... Well, I'm sorry, you could definitely find a direct provision centre who needs toys close to you, and you could drop them out to them. Yeah. And, like, that might be a, a good home for them. Like, if, for, if, for our listeners who are hearing this, if they have experience of that playroom clean-out, that toys are perfectly functional and fit for the purpose they were originally designed for, do they end up just firing them into the bin or have they somewhere So you'd almost never they put toys in the bin, would you? Like, unless they're crocked. There'd be neighbours or family or charities or whatever, surely. People aren't putting... They get like, so much these days that it's... Yeah. No, I don't know when I last put a toy that wasn't broken in the bin, but I'm, I know that when we do get around to cleaning this place out, that we're going to be left with bags of stuff that... Like, I just don't know what to do with them. I feel I won't put them in the bin because the, I would be eaten up by the guilt. Yeah, you can't. You've got to because you know, as soon as I, when I... I'll be so tired after cleaning everything up that I'll go for a lie down and when I wake up from my snooze, Alexa will be telling me how there's 10 <laughs> microplastic particles in every glass of water I drink. I was wondering where that story was going. <laughs> um, where, so it's all where, linked. Where, I think we'll have to you buy... Have you seen 2001 A Space Odyssey? No. You should watch that. Is it all right? Hello, Dave. I'd say you shouldn't watch it by the sounds of what's going on at home. Only fools and horses. No. <laughs> <laughs> we're, um, I think we'll have to buy uh, some new presents this weekend. We're doing. Uh, we're trying to get rid of the soothers. Soother. So uh, the promise is... Funny enough, I've been saying to him all week, we're going to... Go on. Is the little one using the soother yeah, as well? Yeah. Are you in any way tempted to... Well, don't really from need her. This. Yeah. Mm, not really, not so much. Definitely from the elder fella, though. But the difficulty you see is that he keeps giving her her scissor because uh, he's like, obviously there's a like, well, if you have it, one for you, one for me. But um, so we're like, I've been saying to my week, oh, we're going to throw away the gum gums, we call them, and throw away the gum gums. And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, throw away the gum gums, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then They're not serious. And then we're like, just to, the, thing to the point where we put them in a little uh, plastic <clears> thing the other night and he threw them out the door and he was like, oh, that's great, we'll throw them away. And then like two seconds later, he was like, oh, but I'm going to bed now. 
Pardon me, the gum gum. <laughs> so, then, so then I thought, I better ramp it up a bit so he actually understands. He doesn't seem to understand. Like, if he's saying we'll throw them away, that just might mean literally we'll throw them out the door and then we'll get them back again. So then last night I was saying to him, so yeah, gum gum's in the bed, in the bin now on Saturday. Not bin. Throw them away. Not bin. I was like, no, no, we'll they'll be going <laughs> in the bin. Thing. Yeah. We're going well, to now, no. is, we're only three months out from Christmas. Can can you not just give the gum gums to Santa, leave them out, and when Santa drops in his Christmas presents, he'll take them with him? Well, what we were suggesting was that we'd bring him and buy him a toy. So it's like, we'll bring you and get your toy, and that'll be the thing, and then we'll just, the gum gums will go uh, in the bin. I don't um, think that's going to work. You don't think so? He'll get his toy, Yeah. and then okay. that night, he'll be wondering where his gum gums is. But there will, I'm presuming <coughs> there'll be a period of time Swap. here that there'll yeah. be like a... They, I presume no matter what we do, if we were to land him... Like if we were to build Walt Disney World on the front doorstep so want them. once he goes yeah, to bed. Matter. That night, yeah. you're going to have to go through the pain, the, pain, the yeah. present. He sleeps with it every the, night, does he? <coughs> yes, only when, he only has it when he goes to bed. Right. The incentives will make absolutely no difference. If In the complete absence of the incentives, you will have the same problems as you will have with the presents. They'll be fine, though. It's just it's one day, two days, is it's over. Really Week like, I don't know. We, we, didn't, we never really used them. Did you know, right? No. We just took them. We took them cold turkey, gone. Good luck. And everything's fine after a couple of days. Yeah. That's the, yeah. like, the... Plus bottles were involved as well. It was all happening right. at the exact oh, same time. Right. It was Armageddon from his point of view. <laughs> and we had to slice up the teats on the bottles and the teats on the soothers before putting them in the bin. Yeah, it's because mad. we knew we would go yeah, fishing yeah. through the bins yeah. right, well, to pull them out when well, that's the red mist descended. <laughs> and when he found those... <laughs> Sliced, he must have been like, Whoa, okay. yeah. my parents are hardcore. This is a 14, 15, 16 year old chair. <laughs> this is the room. That was the only way to stop us going through the bins when the wow. shit really hit wow. the fan in the deep, dark hours of the early morning. Sorry, uh, to stop you going through the bin. Yeah. That's an excellent point. Sorry, I wasn't even thinking about it. Once you get rid of it, you have to get rid of it. That's a good point. Just get the scissors and go through it like a credit card That's because a good point. otherwise. You will break it at 3 a.m. when he's awake screaming at you, roaring at you, throwing the biggest tantrum he's ever thrown, mm. firing his toys off the wall, rattling the gate. <laughs> you know you're up in three hours of work, and this is the third night in a row this has happened. Yeah. You will go downstairs, and you'll hop into the black, black bin, and you'll go looking for that too. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let that happen. So what I'm going to do... What happened then, is... Dave? <laughs> what do you mean? You gave it to him. No, we sliced them, them all up. up. Yeah, I sliced them all up, yeah. I'm so there was obviously one night you did go through them, though. No. No, no, we, we did you this. You knew this start. was coming. We knew this would happen. Okay, right. And the first night was, oh, it was a bad night. It was definitely, I'd say, between two and four, like t- an actual two hour. Woof. Non stop, which. Two every, four is the worst. Every storm has, will eventually blow itself out, and wow. this happened. And then the next night, it might have only been an hour, the night after that, there yeah. might have been a question going to bed. Yeah. It went in so, three or so four nights. Give yourself give a week. And by the end of the week, there wasn't even a request for, right. can I have a boppy, can I have a sailor? Yeah, because he has like, we, so he used to have them during the day and we took them off him for during the day. And he got used to that pretty quickly. He was like, oh, I can't have it fair enough. But I'm going to, that little uh, Al Pacino style speech there, I'm going to have that ready to go at like 2 a.m. on Saturday morning. As he's like beating a path to the door, I'll be like, listen, let's just listen to Dave's advice one more time and let's... That's Sorry, it for him here. This isn't advice for him, it's for you and your wife. Oh, exactly, that's what I'm saying. We, well, I, I will be suggesting to my wife that let's listen to Dagcast. Dave's got a really good... But if there is a soother in the house, yeah. come Saturday morning at 2am, mm. you've already lost. Well, there will be uh, the baby's soothers. So there's always the chance you'll just reach for that. There's, uh, let's not rule that out, yeah. I mean, uh, but I, we can't, and useless, though. We can't, like, um, we can't really do her at the same time, can we? She's too young. I mean, age? I, nine like, months. I don't think that's fair, no. No. But do you need to see there? You don't really. <coughs> you probably don't, but like, you know, you know my history with the old tantrums. If it works. <laughs> okay, okay. If the okay. soother works okay, for the okay. nine month old, fair I don't point. think it's fair to be taking that away from her as well. No, We've been so. blessed that the younger guy never had one from day one, right. just no interest. Right. <coughs> but we are getting down into, we're getting into the boppy territory now. Because he's boppy? As in the bottle, we're in, oh, he's three yeah. in November, and um, I want to get rid of them now. Uh. But uh, have you tried the water trick? You fed a milk, it's water, so it's fine. No one cares, and then it's like really boring. You're not getting any physical benefit out of it. It's like no, it's well, it's not pretty much water. It's oat milk he's drinking, so like it's. I don't even know what that it's, is. It's like ninety percent water anyway. Right. But look, I'm not too. I'm not too worried about it yet. But I would like them to be gone by. Here's by the Christmas. like you definitely learn as it goes on. 
the first one I bottled for ages, the second one I bottled for ages, the third one barely many bottle at bedtime, like for a little while, and then just a little bit, and you're like taking it off and going, that's all you can have. Okay. Yeah. It just, yeah. Uh, like all the things that you use as crutches to get you through yeah. the first one, the second one benefits from you realizing they don't really need it, and actually there'll be a bit of a, there'll be a minor tantrum, mm. and We'll ride that out because actually we've heard all your shit before. There's nothing you can say that, that we haven't already heard. <laughs> I fully understand that you're actually going to be fine. It turns out you're not going to cry yourself to death. Do you find yourself ignoring your kids <coughs> far more often, mid tantrum, than you would the first one or two? Yeah, I can like totally have a conversation child, while they're having a tantrum in the background. The you first can, child would have been like, mm. "But I want this," and then you would explain to them every time yeah. why. No, the reason why you can have this is Daddy did this, and Mammy said that, and it'll do this to your teeth, or we'll do whatever it is, and then he screams at you again ten seconds later. No, but as I said, the reason why we're the third kids throwing the same tantrum, and you're just like working away on your laptop, uh, or yeah, you're yeah. baking the dinner, or you're putting <laughs> the clothes on the line, and he she, or she isn't. He, they're getting absolutely no traction from yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no traction. I find that, um, do you know the, you were just saying there about, like, you know, you're saying to them, you can't have that bottle because, you know, you make up some bullshit reason. Uh, I try not to make up bullshit. So, that's what I, like, I've been having this conversation with my wife and some other people in our circle, and it's like, um, they will say to him, like, oh, you can't have your gum gum in the middle of the day because what happens there is that... Da, 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 yeah. I'm like, just tell him he can't have it. Yeah. It's like he's like he's looking at you, going, "Why are you making up all this shit?" No, like yeah, I agree. I'm definitely. Um, I realise I've just been critical of my wife again. This is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he threw in the and some other people in our circle of friends, which are clearly fictional. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more than them, to be honest. <laughs> it's more than that was there. that was directed at one person and one person only. Oh, yeah. Now I do find mothers tend. To, uh, I was going to use one word there, but I won't. <laughs> tend to be a little more emotionally in tune with the demands of their children than maybe I would be. About what? In general, when they want something that I don't want to give them, yeah, I'll just say no. There's like there's definitely been lots of times recently where like I'll they're not supposed to have something at a certain time, and I'll be like no 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 you can't have that, and then I realise just give it to them, give it to them. Who cares? This isn't going to be the thing that turns them into a crackhead. This is not going to be it. It'll be something else. Uh, yeah. This is fine. Okay, Grant, take it. Take That's it. the yardstick by which you measure everything. Uh, yeah. Right. I love the example that they will become a crack addict. <laughs> That'll be something this. else. Not this. Now, is this crack addict potential <laughs> or, or not? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> this time you can't watch TV before 4 p.m. Uh, yeah, we, uh, on Fridays only. We did have um, an email in from somebody wondering uh, what you would do in the circumstance when your kid is telling you that their childminder is hitting them, and, uh, but there's no signs of it. So it's like, oh, she hit me. What would you do? What would you do? Oh, I, don't think you can, I don't think you can trust children is the worst no. thing about this. No. Like, they make up so much crap about their brothers and sisters. The, young, the two fellas were in the room the other day, and I had my back to them, but I was looking on the inverted screen on my phone. Right? Oh, so I had you're my spying. phone up, pretending I was on my phone. Oh, right. Yeah. And I was looking in at them, and there was a two metres between them. It's like the umpire in a test match trying to see if there's space between bat and ball. Did he get any bat in the ball? The other guy's going, ow! And throwing himself onto the ground. <laughs> oh, wow! Did you take a video of it? No, I didn't. Oh, I was been. like, what happened? What happened? Dylan hit me. I'm like, but I saw it. I saw he didn't. Like, you're, you're actually almost on the other side of the room. So if he came in and told me that his child minor had hit him, my first inclination would be not to believe him. Mm. Yeah. And like, but yeah, because you can't very well turn on to the child minder, can they? And say like, oh, you know, listen. You? I don't I, know. No, think I think it's it in is. the child minder's interest to be told that there is a child, <laughs> he's mine, but then, that is basically <laughs> telling people that you are abusing him because who... <laughs> Else might he say it to? He could say it to your his parents. grandparents. <laughs> he could say it to like, Daddy's exactly, hitting me. Uh, exactly. He might be saying the exact same thing he's saying to the childminder child minder about you to somebody else. Oh, that's true. So you need to. That's pretty good having you in for that person. That's like a. You need to get to the bottom. But like, for example, you could. This person, a, a listener to the dadcast email, said that yeah. you could say to the childminder, look, he or she has said this. By any chance, is he telling you that I'm hitting him? And then you're in it together then. 
But it, it feels like, I mean, I know you're saying that, it does feel like as if you were saying that to the child mind. The child mind would be like, <laughs> See through that, hey, hang on a second, what, you're accusing you, me of... Because yeah. like, that could be a pretty fundamental faltering in the relationship. But do you think a child minder would like to know that one of the kids they mind every day is going home to their parents telling them that they're hitting them? Well, if they took my attitude, no. <laughs> they would just they would not be interested in, <laughs> in anything about that. But, uh, but I'm, sure that, I'm sure with our child minders, they would like to know. Because, look, stories grow legs. Yeah, would you, would you chat to the child, though, and say... Well, I'd, I would try and grill them. I would grill the child... Um, yeah, there's always ways to periodically, ask questions, isn't there? <coughs> so, and see, does the story change? Yeah, so, it depends what, what happened, where were you, what room were you in, where, where in your body did they hit you, it what happened It depends on what age the child is, doesn't it? Because like, if the child is, like, whatever, like, two or three, the child would be like, oh, the child might have hit me. And then you would say to the child, now, where were you when that happened? Uh, pink clouds, like, you know what I mean, the children, you know what I mean, at that age, the child is yeah. not, like, engaged in some mature conversation about the details of what happened. The child yeah. is like, ah, oh, there's candy flies over there, let's go. You know I think I mean? a two and two, so a two year old that's it close to being three age. will they'll be able to relay a story. It depends I know, on yeah, the we uh, we obviously the, the hide and seek crash. I don't know. I didn't actually watch that. So I was on holidays. You know what? I did watch it. Well, I was on holidays when it happened, and there was like I didn't go looking for, looking holidays. on the player for it. Um, we weren't in that one, but we were in a different one and was part of a chain. And there was a prime time about it when we were there too. And like that, it's like. So you're asking questions mm. of somebody who can't really answer that much and, you know, you're trying to... So uh, that's definitely quite hard to do, to well, ask at least the child. RT have opened the door for you to uh, <laughs> legitimately have, like, oh, I saw on the TV last night <laughs> yeah. that you were hitting children. <laughs> no, no, I don't mean with the, with the people in the crash. I meant with, like, with your child to see if they'd seen anything or if they're oh, comfortable yeah, yeah. or were unhappy about anything, but, like... Yeah, well, that would be my advice to that listener. But it's obviously not an easy situation for them to be in. But if it's happening, you need to do something that's a good, to protect that's a good your child. Advice. And if it's not happening, I think you need to protect the child minder. I, make a, I mean, I know I say this most weeks, but again, blown away by the level of interaction <laughs> from our right honourable friend here. So it's not this Monday, it's the following Monday. Every week, yeah. So. Why? For junior infants? Yeah. Oh, really? We're being on Monday. Really? No, we're in on Wednesday. Really? <laughs> <coughs> the day after the All Ireland final. Quality parenting. Oh, that's not great, Dave. Um, two days after Electric Picnic. Oh, that's going to be. We will be performing. Yeah. That's going to be a hard weekend. Well, Are you doing the All Ireland final? Yeah. All oh, right. So you're on your best behaviour at Electric Picnic. Yeah, well, I'm driving. I have to be somewhere afterwards. Well, yeah. I won't be on my Wednesday the 28th. We're back at school. Okay. For yeah. like an hour and a half. Yeah, ours is just an hour. I think it's a couple of hours and then... <laughs> Could you not take a bit longer? Come on. <laughs> she's the middle one. She's grand. She understands what it's been like and has been around school loads. So it's like, yeah, and knows everybody. So I um, I can't wait for our fella to go, I have to say, because like, he's been... To um, crash. Been yeah, exactly. Your yeah. <laughs> ah, no, but it's, just, it's more like that he's... I'm just, I think he'd really enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think that he'll there'll be other he'll be have buddies and he'll have like minded new toys crazies. And I'd say so, yeah. In need of socialisation after yeah, only hanging out with adults. Yeah. It's true. And he's a little bit there's a little bit of shyness about him as well. Like if we're out and there's a bunch of kids around, he will happily stand there just looking at what everybody else is doing and occasional bits of interaction. But there's definitely in the a bit kitchen of at parties, huh? Yeah, in the kitchen at parties. Yeah, yeah. that's him. Yeah, well, it's, uh, Nick Hornby made a life out of it. So yeah, it's worked out. Uh, my wife went back to school today. Never has anybody skipped back to work after a summer off as much. It's like, <laughs> <"Woo-hoo."> <laughs> I see all the teachers on uh, social media giving out about it, but like, I mean, the parents who are teachers are also like, Whew. yeah, back to other Long people's kids. Yeah, really just, uh, so we won't be recording day. next week, will we? Because we'll be, well, we will, but it'll be on the Saturday. Are we actually recording uh, it? Is that a yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, we're totally recording it. That'll be an episode. But we should do producer, next week's the, episodes. The producer's looking after that. If we can. I mean, <laughs> good of you to step up there, Adrian. Well done. Right, we we'll will see. record. We'll record next week. We're down a couple of episodes. We owe the listeners a couple of episodes. Okay. We what can, sort of a set we can are trial we doing? our material on the Friday. Are we and doing like. Um, repeat some of it. The greatest hits. Do you have any greatest hits? We were, there was a. I have a, a few. Like if people come, you know, when people go to see sort of. Def Leppard or whatever, they, they don't want to be hearing new shit, like they want to hear... Hysteria. Yeah. 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 Do you know? 
We will be producing our equivalent of hysteria. <laughs> we will be hyster- and, in uh, hysterics. Pour some sugar on me. <laughs> uh, you can email us at dadcast at offtheball.com. You can tweet us at dadcastpod. You can leave a review on the iTunes page. That's uh, very helpful for us. It helps get the word out there. Or uh, you can just get in touch with us randomly, individually. Um, if there's anything you'd like to do, uh, hear us talk about at Electric Picnic or indeed if you have any other questions about advice that you'd like the sage that is Dave McIntyre to answer yeah. then uh, just drop us a line we will see you next week good stuff folks